Hello, my fellow page turners, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with the hat who reads, and let's do a library haul today. I recently went to the library because, you know, I didn't have enough books to read. <laughs> I'm a horrible person. I never can stop. So since I'm short on time, I thought I'd just do a video quickly talking about the books I got from the library. First one I picked up was Sloan Crossley's Cult Classic. I've been hearing some really good things about this book. It just came out here maybe a week or two ago, not very long ago. And brief synopsis. One night in New York City's Chinatown, a woman is at a reunion dinner with former colleagues when she excuses herself to buy a pack of cigarettes. On her way back, she runs into an ex-boyfriend, and then another, and another. Nothing is quite what it seems as the city becomes awash with ghosts of heartbreaks past. What would normally pass for coincidence becomes something far stranger. The recently engaged Lola must contend not only with the viability of her current relationship, but with the fact that both her best friend and her former boss, a magazine editor turned mystical guru, might have an unhealthy investment in the outcome. Memories of the past swirl and converge in ways both comic and eerie as Lola is forced to decide if she will surrender herself to the conspiring of one very contemporary cult. I thought that sounded interesting and bizarre. I've never read anything by Sloane Crossley before. And I have started. I'm not very far in. I'll probably be close farther in by the time you watch this video, but... What I've read so far, it is different, but I'm not hating it or anything, so. <laughs> then I picked up Grady Hendrick's The Final Girl Support Group. I've read quite a few of Grady's novels already. I have enjoyed all of them, and okay, this is the best art author picture I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, been a huge fan of his stuff so far, though, and here's the synopsis for this one. Can you see we got it in here? In horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll, the one who fought back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends, the one who emerges bloody but victorious. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago and has defined every day of her life since, and she's not alone. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapist in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, putting their lives back together piece by piece. That is, until one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again, piece by piece. But the thing about these final girls is that they have each other now, and no matter how bad the odds, how dark the night, how sharp the knife, they will never, ever give up. So that sounds really fun. And I've loved Grady's stuff so far. Like I said, Horror Store was fun. Vamp the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires was a lot of fun. Best Friend's Exorcism. I loved pretty much all of his stuff so far. And I was going to wait and get this for October of Horror, but I actually have another one of his I'll read then. So I thought, I'm going to read this one now, and I can read the other one then. And finally, the other one I got was a novel I hadn't heard too much about, but it was Dan Frey's... The future is yours. And I'm getting a really bad reflection on there. Do you see me? <laughs> anyway, snaps to this one. For Ben Boyce and Adi Chandra, I'm, I'm sorry, Adi Chandra, the answer is unequivocally yes. If you had the chance to go one year into the future, would you? And they're betting everything that you'll say yes to. Welcome to the future, a computer that connects to the internet one year from now so you can see who you'll be dating, where you'll be working, even whether or not you'll be alive in the year to come. By forming a startup to deliver this revolutionary technology to the world, Ben and Adi have made their wildest, most impossible dream a reality. Once Silicon Valley outsiders, they're now as hot as commodity. The device can predict everything perfectly from stock market spikes and sports scores to political scandals and corporate takeovers, allowing them to chase down success and fame while staying one step ahead of the competition. But the future their device foretells is not the bright one they imagined. Ambition, greed, jealousy, and perhaps an apocalypse. The question is, can they stop it? Told through emails, texts, transcripts, and blog posts, this bleeding-edge tech thriller chronicles the cost of innovation and asks how far you'd go to protect the ones you love, even from themselves. So this one sounded like something I would enjoy also. It sounded very much like the one where they're doing some weird kind of thing that's going to just really go in weird directions. I don't know. I don't know much about this book. So I'm going to give it a shot. It's not terrible. None of these are terribly long. I probably won't get to this one. I probably won't get to this one and 
final girls until July. Cult classic, I'm hoping to finish yet here in June. I've got about a week, not even. Oh, less than a week by the time you're watching this, but yeah. So that was my recent library haul. Money shot, right? <laughs> I just want to ask, have you guys read any of these? What did you think of any of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and keep turning pages.